A lot of philosophers do indeed write their books for other philosophers and nobody else. And uh, it raises the question of whether philosophers should be engaging with the general public, the general reading public, and not directing their thoughts to um, only their fellow workers. Well, that seems to be the kind of, so to speak, difference of opinion which presupposes that there's one good way of doing a thing, that there's one right forward path with respect to the writing of books. But obviously there isn't one right forward path. If you have the view, as I do, that philosophy is a certain kind of project, it's obvious that it can turn up in popular books or other books what philosophy is, is not deep thinking, and it's not deep feeling, and it's not uh, French or froggish invention, you know, done on the way to the cafe and all that. What philosophy is, and I think this is true of the history of philosophy, is it's a concentration on what you can call the ordinary logic of intelligence. It is a greater concentration on it than science is. That is the fundamental difference between philosophy and science. Philosophy is a greater concentration on the ordinary logic of intelligence. That's not to say that it's, science doesn't attempt it. It's to say it's got other things to do as well. And if you ask what the ordinary logic of intelligence is, it is inquiry or reflection or thinking that is guided by, I think, four things. It's an attempt to be clear about things. It's an attempt um, to be clear and precise about things. That's number one. It goes for clarity, often by means of analysis, breaking a thing down into its parts. Anyone, anyway, the first aim is clarity in that sense. The second aim is, of course, consistency or validity. Consistency or validity. Where people go wrong is that they often take up inconsistent positions. And if you take up an inconsistent position, you're actually saying nothing. Because if you say both P and not P, you say nothing. And the third thing that is part of the ordinary logic of intelligence is completeness, not leaving things out, not leaving things out. And the last one, which certainly distinguishes philosophy from a lot of things, is the aim at generality. It takes up and attempts to arrive at general views of things. Now, if that's what philosophy is, a concentration on the ordinary logic of intelligent inquiry, which is those four things, obviously you can do that in popular philosophy. And you can do that rather more persistently in books for other members of the philosophical world.